Hello, everybody. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio, the Sales Professional Network. I am your host, Andre Harrell. You know, this is Blog Talk Radio's first and only show dedicated to the needs of the sales professional. And regardless of the industry that you're in, if you're in the sales business, this channel and show is just for you. We do focus on topics that are relevant to all industries. And the commonality is that we in the sales business as sales professionals face similar challenges each and every day. And the Sales Professional Network, TSPN, sincerely was designed to create a forum where we can come together and discuss these challenges and come up with some solutions and best practices to meet those challenges. Tonight's show is brought to you by AH Square and Beyond Consulting. That's AH, the number two, and beyond.com, delivering beyond our clients' expectations in sales strategies, marketing, and sales training. AH Square and Beyond, increasing your competency always means increasing your sales results. For those of you who are listening to tonight's program and would like to join in on the discussion, you certainly can do so. The number is 347-838-9979. Press the number 1 on your keypad. Or if you'd like to participate in the chat room, I have the chat room opened up, so you can certainly go there. If you're new to Blog Talk Radio, you're going to have to probably sign up with a, I don't know, a fictitious name, or if you want to give your real name, that's fine too as well but uh, the chat room is there for you as well to discuss and if you want to pose a question in the chat room I'll kind of be going back and forth and I'll bring that question to the forefront of our discussion this evening I do have a question for the listening audience do you work to live or live to work please think about that question and be honest with yourself I think most would say they work to live because that's the perceived correct answer and but we shouldn't treat that as a test question, as if you're being graded, but as an honest face-in-the-mirror self-assessment on how you look at your life. You know, I can truly say personally I grapple with that question because I do believe in work and staying ridiculously productive. And to be totally transparent, I'm sure that thinking is definitely at the expense of other things that are certainly more important in life. And, you know, there are many out there that struggle with having a balanced life. Sales professionals are no exception. The travel, the meetings, the food availability, the stress of the job can cause a lot of havoc if there's a continual unbalanced discipline in taking care of one's health. And tonight, we're going to be talking about how you as a sales professional can achieve that balance of sustaining good health and watching that stress level. And I'm very honored to have as a guest on the show tonight an expert in achieving such balance, Stacy Shipman. Stacy is a speaker, writer, and wellness advocate who promotes a fun, practical, and integrated approach to healthy living. As a speaker and writer, her work focuses on improving personal and professional success and effectiveness through stress reduction and physical activity. Stacy is the creator and publisher of Healthy South Shore, the premier resource for men and women who want to get out and get active and feel great south of Boston and beyond. Healthy South Shore provides information via online content, a weekly email, events, and a membership program. Stacy is the author of Experience Less Stress, More Success, Networking for Business, creator of the audio CD, Let It Flow, Short Guided Meditations, and the forthcoming guide and tips book, Look and Feel Your Best. You certainly can learn more about Stacy at www.stacyshipman.com, or you can follow her on Twitter at Stacy Shipman. Welcome to the Sales Professional Network, Stacy. Thank you, Andre. It's good to be here. Thank you so much, and I know that uh, you've got a cold, so I want my audience to be aware of that, but Stacy says she's going to do an outstanding job tonight, and I'm totally confident she will as, <laughs> as well. You know, let's, let's start off there. You know, you got my kind of uh, introduction into the program, Stacy, and I talk a little bit about balance, and even I myself kind of had to watch my balance between work and things outside of work that uh, that are certainly very important. You know, let's start out there. What is your relationship? Or what's your thoughts on the relationship between good health and stress? Oh, there's a big relationship between good health and stress. Um, you know, first off, what what is good health? And I think that that really is up to the individual. You know, we all have our own experiences, our own uh, issues, if you will, that we deal with on a regular basis, emotionally, mentally, physically. And so that, that definition will be different for everybody. But if you've defined that for yourself uh, based on, you know, where you are and what's going on for you and how good health can be part of your life, uh, then the stress that you 
experience is going to throw that off. Okay. Yeah. For example, I have a scratchy throat today, which could be because of the dry weather. You know, I live up in the Boston area. It's been very hot and dry. We haven't had any rain. Yeah. Uh, could be because I, I'm under a lot of stress with my work and, you know, maybe it's a sign to say, slow down a little bit and, you know, take care of yourself and then keep going. So they, they go hand in hand. Stress can wreak havoc on all aspects of your life. Um, but first you have to define what good health is to understand how it's maybe setting you off track. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and that kind of leads me right into my next thought on that is, you know, when you define good health, what is the significant difference between, would you say, Stacey, good health and bad health? Maybe as to kind of set the tone for the distinction. What, what, what would the two, what would the difference, <laughs> what would the difference between, between the two be, you think, in, in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go to the extreme first on that one and say good health is the ability to be up and alive and doing your work and managing your family responsibilities and managing your financial health and your emotional well-being and your, uh, well, I'll say spiritual well-being, but be it known that when I say that, I'm talking about your hobbies and your connections to other people and your relationships and, and even your work and, and whether or not you feel like you're doing good work. Um, so if you're able to do all those things and get some, some time in for all of those, and I know you mentioned a balance before, you, you're not going to get equal time for all of those, but it's important to know that you need to get some time, even if it's five minutes, um, to, to feed all parts of you. And then I think on the other extreme, bad health is when you're not able to take care of those things. You can't take care of yourself physically by getting you know, exercise, your, your energy is low, you're sick, you're lethargic, uh, your finances are in disarray, your relationships are in disarray. And when you start to see... Um, you know, your life not flowing as you may have imagined it, then it's time to take heed and, and step back and see what areas need some attention. You know, it, 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 that's such a great point because I think when people hear Stacey Good Health, they automatically go to diet and food, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm seriously, not but, thin enough. I'm not healthy. That's what I hear the most. That, and I just and I hear that myself, and quite frankly, I, I think that the same way. When I when I when I see you know news programs or shows on TV when they talk about good health, they only go into the diet, but they don't talk about the other aspects of good health, which, as you just mentioned, is the whole mental uh, aspect mm -hmm. of, of good health. You know, I think it's fairly agreed upon, Stacy, that attaining good health takes a lot of discipline and patience. And you know, talk to us about that process and why it's so hard for people to attain that level of discipline and patience. And you're talking to one right now, so I'm, I'm, in, the chair, I'm, in, I'm in the chair right now for, with you. So, I mean, yeah, so what's your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, two things. One, it's a question I ask myself a lot. I'm very curious about the reasons. Two, some of what I've read, I haven't done my own research on this, but some research that has come out over the years um, could be anything from... Um, your belief system, you know, what you were taught as a young person. For example, I had a woman in a workshop once who said, you know, I just, I don't make time for exercise or stress management or whatever, or even hobbies, because I was always taught that work has to be done first before you can make time for fun. And yeah. she has a busy life, you know, she's a professional, she has a family, so in her eyes, her work was never done. So, so she couldn't she was unable to make time for herself, but her past beliefs and what she was taught as a young girl um, led her into this uh, unhealthy pattern into adulthood. So it could be your past belief system. Um, could be, you know, chemicals. So there's a lot of brain research coming out and just the different ways our body works uh, biologically and chemically could have an effect on that. Uh, the people that you spend time with could impact your ability to uh, stay true to your own, you know, definition of health and taking the steps that you need to get there. Uh, there's a lot of research about the circles that you hang out with or play with, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. work with, can impact your your decision-making ability. Uh, and, and I think societally, it's, it's better to be busy, you know, it's looked upon as, well, I'm so busy at work, or I'm so, you know, I'm traveling here and there, and I've got the kids, and I have all of these things that that, from a societal perspective, is the picture that we want to see versus, oh, I took time today to go for a walk or to go to yoga. And I know for myself where this is my life. I mean, I live it, I breathe it, work it. Um, even when I talk about it, going to a yoga, oh, that must be so nice to have the time to do that. 
<laughs> and you know, honestly, Andre, it's, it's a necessity that you don't have to go to an hour long class, but you have to take time for yourself because if you don't and you get sick, you cannot, you cannot take care of all the other responsibilities that you have. It just won't be possible. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting, and like going back to the, I guess if you want to say opening monologue, I talk about how most people would say, and it's, it's the correct answer to say you work to live versus you live to work. And one of the things you just said, which, you know, I'm a, quite frankly a victim of, is that I know I live to work from a mental standpoint, and I think it goes back to what you just said, Stacy, which is right on point, which is I've always been brought up to be, be productive, got to be productive. Gotta be pretty yeah. busy. If there's any downtime, that means you're not being productive, and yeah. there's a problem with that. So be right. productive, even right. if it's at the cost of, of other things. So I yeah. think you're right. I think, uh, especially, uh, would you say the Generation X probably are in that category <laughs> of the people that want to? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I can't. Yeah, I can't answer that. I, I can't say it's Generation X alone. I think there's a lot of population. I don't know that it's a generational thing. I think it 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 runs you know, for all ages. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just to, to back up a second, um, there's a great, well, Tony Schwartz, who is the founder of the Energy Project. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him or if any of your listeners are, but um, theenergyproject.com, I think is his website. But he talks about uh, a lot about productivity in the workplace and managing your energy instead of managing your time. Hmm. And one of them, um, and, and a lot of his, re- I, I, he's a great resource, I, I love uh, the work that he does and I draw from his work. Um, but he talked about, in terms of the productivity that you were mentioning, Andre, working, uh, focus, focus as you can. I know we get distracted a lot at work. But as focus as you can for a 90-minute time period and then taking wow. what he calls a renewal break. So you work hard, 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 hard for 90 minutes and then you get up, you leave it, you get up, you take a walk, you get some water, go to the bathroom, uh, get some fresh air, talk to a colleague, what, whatever that renewal, get a snack, whatever that renewal break needs to be for you, but something that allows your mind to settle a little bit, get a little movement in your body, some sort of renewal for you. Because research, uh, also Herbert Benson, who's uh, uh, out of the Boston area actually, has a lot of research and he has a book called The Breakout Principle, or Breakout or Breakthrough, I think it's Breakout. Same, mm-hmm. A lot of the same things in terms of the breaks are necessary for creativity and productivity. And it sounds so counterintuitive. Take a break when I have all this work. What are you talking about? <laughs> but the, the research that, that these, at least these two men have done, and I can speak for my own life too in my personal experience, it, it works. You know, and, and you don't have to take an hour. It could be a five minute uh, walk around the block that sparks something. Maybe it's a solution to a problem you had or you know, sales professional, maybe maybe that that set of words that's really gonna get your next client, you know, oh, I should have said this, I'm gonna call him back and let's see if we can make this work. Um, but but those breaks are necessary and there's research out there to prove that they actually boost your productivity. You know, it, it, it's interesting that you say that because one of the things you, you said also too, what what break? And I think it goes back to something that you said also <coughs> earlier is that discipline, knowing that, okay, I've got to take a break. And even if I take a break, that doesn't mean I'm missing anything. I'm just okay. recharging. And the reason why I think that's such a great idea because I've done that. And I, how many times have, you know, you've been on the phone, you've been on a conference call or you got a distressing email and you want to respond right away. And, and mm. I've, I've learned, okay, Andre, walk away. <laughs> walk away. Because if you respond, it's probably not going to be the response that you right. want. And you're probably going to regret it later because of that quick response. Walk away. Take, you know, take a walk. Go on the treadmill for a while. Then come back. And normally when I've done that, I come back thinking, holy cow, I'm glad I didn't respond. Because now mm-hmm. I'm refreshed and I can respond appropriately the way I should respond versus, man, if I would have just responded to that email because I'm stressed out and tired, it wouldn't have been good. <laughs> it wouldn't right. have been a good thing. So I, I've experienced that myself, but I think it's just the discipline walking away and saying, yeah. I'm missing something if I walk away. Yeah. You know, let, let's, look, let's look at the sales professional. 
you know, and, and, and you know, for example, tr- you know, travel, meetings, business, dinners, etc. You know, sticking sometimes to some <laughs> consistent diet regimen, and I guess we're focusing on, you know, good eating habits as a way to minimize stress level. I, right. I would say it's challenging because, you know, you're going uh-huh. to an airport, you know, these business dinners, and, you know, I think you would agree when you're at mm-hmm. work and you're traveling, you're on business dinners, you don't mm-hmm. normally eat that way as you do when you're at home. I mean, steaks right. are there, <laughs> all these <Right>. great food. <laughs> All these, all these yeah. great foods are there. You know, what are your thoughts in some way of still attaining some type of regimen, even during such a hectic schedule and kind of pushing away those foods that you wouldn't normally eat? What's, what's your right. thoughts on that? So, so a couple of things. One is, um, again, I go back to what I said at the beginning. You know, is health, good health, uh, something you've defined for yourself and something that's important for you? So it's really, it's necessary to come to the conclusion for yourself that this is something that I really want to work towards mm-hmm. um, and so, so if you if you know that it's something you value and that's important to you then the next step is to a become aware of your habits you know how, how are you on the road versus how you are at home and then the second thing is if if travel is is a sometimes occurrence and not an everyday occurrence uh, then remember that what you're experiencing is temporary and we're all human and I come from the philosophy and perspective that life is to be enjoyed and that food is to be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But to notice how much of, you know, are you having steaks every day? Maybe you can order a salad with chicken. Or maybe mm-hmm. you can get the grilled chicken with vegetables and potatoes or something instead of having the steak every time you eat. Um, I had, a, I had a, a friend who was a sales professional. Uh, I think he was in his late 20s at the time that we had this conversation. And he said, Chase, how do I, what do I do? I'm, I'm out, you know, I'm taking potential clients out, we're drinking martinis, we're eating, you know, <laughs> fried yeah. foods, we're, you know, yeah. and, and they're my clients, so, you know, I'm mirroring them and I need to be, yep. you know, as they are. And I said, well, how about this? What if you had your martini and then you asked the bartender to put some water in the empty glass before you had your second martini, you know? And he's like, oh, that's nice. not a bad, you know, he said, that's Very not a bad nice. idea. So Very there nice. are, you know, simple things that you can kind of fake if you have to. You know, like I said, like don't you know? Instead of having a steak every day, go for the grilled chicken or a piece of fish if you like fish. Or if you're vegetarian, there's always sort of pasta and vegetable meal. So just switching up what you're eating. Um, yeah. And if you're running through an airport, uh, Lord knows there's not a lot of good choices. <laughs> <laughs> In the airport, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that's so true. Um, you know, I think part of it too is not. Sometimes I think we worry so much about the food that we eat that we put that we add more to our bad health by worrying about the food instead of eating, you know, yeah. for example, the, the sweet treat or something, you know, if it's a donut or a bagel or a, a muffin, because like, it's yeah. quick and it's accessible, just eat the muffin and, and like, be done with it, <laughs> you know, or eat half yeah. the muffin and, and be done with it and not worry so much about what we put in our mouth. And I think part of the issue is the focus that we put on food. And That's it's right. So, you know, at the forefront of our minds, instead of saying, all right, today it looks like my, my best option is a muffin. So how am I going to counteract that later? Well, maybe I'll just have this salad for lunch and maybe I'll see if I can get an extra walk-in, you know, even if it's up and down a hallway in a hotel. But just, you know, acknowledging that this is part of life. And so, you know, I don't like to use the word balance, but, you know, I had a muffin. What can I do later in my meal? My not be so bad. Maybe I ask for a vegetable instead of French fries with my burger. Right. You know, there are simple things that, that can be done if you're open and willing to do it now. Now, you just mentioned it because it, it, it caught my ear real quickly. You said you're not a, actually, a, now you are a fan of balance, Stacey, or you, you, I mean, do you believe in, you know, there's a happy medium between the two or, you know, it just caught my, my ear when you said you're not a fan <laughs> of balance. I don't what? believe in, I don't believe in balance the way that I think a lot of people think about balance. I think hmm. people think about it in equal parts, you know. Okay. Uh, and and there's just no way for that to happen. I mean, if you think about there's 24 hours in a day, and right. so says society, eight hours to sleep, eight hours to work, and eight hours for absolutely everything else. So when you when I look at that equation, there's no way to be equal. But when I, when I think about balance, I think about two things. One, nurturing if you will, all parts of you, like I said earlier, are you taking care of your relationships, 
as much as you can your finances, your physical health, your emotional health, your hobbies. Um, are you taking care of in some way for some amount of time all of the areas of your life that need attention? And mm -hmm. if you are, then I think you'll feel more balanced and, and even more in control. Hmm. And if something is off, for example, you're working overtime for an extended period of time. If you haven't seen your kids, wife, your partner, your parents, your, you know, whoever that you might need to see, you might mm -hmm. feel a little off to take a step back and say, all right, I talk to my colleagues, my boss, and say, look, I haven't seen my family in two weeks. I would love to have an extra hour, you know, leave a little early today so I can go take care of that, and I'll be back to you tomorrow. Um, so it's looking at the pieces that aren't getting attention and, and figuring out where you can give them some. And then the second thing about balance is um, three things that I teach yoga as well, and this comes from yoga. If, if you've ever practiced yoga or any of your uh, listeners have ever seen or practiced yoga, to perform a balanced posture, standing on one foot, say for example, three things have to happen. You have to be focused, your eye gaze is focused, a non-moving point. You have to be present, which means you're, you're focused on your breathing, which is the easiest to so your thoughts are not cluttering you and getting in the way. And then you have to be what I call fully engaged. So you're using, in this case, all the muscles in your body, but you're, you're in that pose and you are working hard for that pose. So when you have the focus, presence, and the engagement in what you're doing, you can feel balanced. So for example, if you are talking to a client uh, on a sales call, and they say something that triggers you in some way, you realize that you forgot to return a call at the office, you forgot to send an email at the office, you forgot to pick up, you know, whatever, the milk that your wife has to pick up on your way from work. All of a sudden you're gone, you're no longer in that conversation. You're gone, you're off balance. You're not there anymore. You might miss something, um, you're not fully engaged anymore because you're thinking about something else. So, hmm. so there's this need to be, or this, um, I think it's important to notice when you're off from where you are physically. Well, you, you just changed my thinking on balance. I, I, I never really <laughs> thought, no, seriously, I, I never really <laughs> thought of it that way because it's almost kind of like you're saying, on the one hand, you don't want to be too extreme on one thing, mm -hmm. but also, too, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Stacey, but you're also mentioning you almost want to live in the moment. So if, if, if you're focused in this area, be focused in that area. Don't think about, mm -hmm. okay, I'm focused in this area. But I'm 60% over here when I need to mm -hmm. cut that back, when I need to cut that back 10% so I can make sure I'm 50%. It almost comes back to what you're saying is your, your mind is too structured, which is probably mm -hmm. cause of stress in right. a sense. I'm That's getting this. <laughs> I'm so, getting this. No. Yeah, I'm, Wait, I'm but, glad you're getting it. That's the yay. <laughs> <laughs> it made sense. <laughs> um, I, I just want to add one more thing. To sure, this. go the ahead. Sure. Is the V in the moment. If you are not where you are right now, so for example, we're on the phone right now. If I were checking email or, you know, I had my husband talking in my ear, I wouldn't be with you on this call. Right. But where I would be, you know, and, and so, it, so that's a, a separate example. If you are thinking about something else while you're, you know, working on a project, talking to a client, or you and I on this call right now, you're either thinking about the future, which hasn't happened, or you're thinking about the past, which you can't do anything about right now. So there really is no other place to be without getting too far into this. Your thoughts yeah. are either past or future. So, and, and that's where a lot of stress happens for people. That, 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 that is, thoughts. yeah, I was going to say that, that is just a profound point. I've, um, I, I guess I never thought of it this way that way and um, no that, that just that just makes so much sense you know let me let me ask you this because this is something also too that um, I picked up on what you said earlier which I think is so true you know as a sales professional when you're on business meetings and you're traveling there's this unwritten or un I guess behind the scenes I don't know if I want to say corporate pressure or peer pressure but this whole idea of if you eat healthy especially if you're around colleagues or especially if you're around clients who are probably not eating healthy, Stacey, there's this pressure 
to kind of say, okay, they're having a steak, I'll have the steak. They're having, mm-hmm. you, you know, and, this, and, this, and, it, and that occurs. That occurs mm-hmm. in real life. And I guess my thoughts on how do you overcome the, the whole thing of, okay, I don't want to be seen as, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Prissy here because I'm eating a salad and when they're eating something that's totally out of line when it comes to being healthy and I'm right. sticking to, like you said, the muffin only and that kind of thing. You know, and this is real talk. You know, how do you how do you kind of still come across as no? We're we're still hanging together as a client and and service provider, or you know, as a client and, and sales professional. And I'm still with you, but you know, I I just watch my my eating habits a little bit better. You know, what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> my my first thought is, you know, in, you know, I mean, our country is in a healthcare crisis, right? And yet we can't get over this. And a criticism when we see somebody else eating differently. So my, the first thing is that, um, you know, if you are the person who wants to eat better for yourself, then you have to have, you have to have the confidence and courage to say, yes, this is what I want. And I know that that might sound so, if we're sales professionals, of course we're confident and courageous and risk takers and you know, we're right. doing all these things, right? Yeah. Um, so I think I do think when it comes to this topic, and I get it all the time. I mean, if I want pizza, I get pizza. If I want a salad, I get a salad. And if I'm out with people and I get the salad and they want to criticize me, I just tell them, I say, look, I, I, this is what I want right now. So I think the important part is to eat what you want to eat, and and not necessarily um, judge yourself or or let yourself be judged for doing that. Right. And um, because it's your life. So if you're going to let, and I've lived, I lived most of my life letting somebody else guide my decisions. So let me tell you, that is no way to live. You miss out on a lot. You will get very angry and resentful. Yep, yep. So you have to think about it as like, this is my life and this is how I want to eat. I also think that it's an opportunity to become a role model and to say, you know, to show other people. The best way to teach other people is to live what you want to teach them. Instead Absolutely. Of telling them what you want to teach them. Absolutely. So, and the surprising thing is, I have actually been in situations where people say, you know what, you're right. I, I don't really need this burger and fries. I'm going to go with the XYZ uh, meal instead. And they feel good about the decision. So you never know. You could actually help somebody else in the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll definitely feel better yourself. Uh, but I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy. So, <laughs> chances, no. so chances are it's not going to happen. You know, we're on this call and and I'm offering some information. Nothing might change for anybody, you know, for a long time. But Mm -hmm. by putting the thoughts out there, you know, kind of like sprinkling them around and and it just gives people maybe a new way to think or or an awareness the next time they go and then eat a meal and they're done with the meal and say, oh, you know, next time I think to try something else. So it's it's important to A, not judge or be allowed to be judged, be to have what you feel like having, and be. And this probably should have been a to know whether or not it's really important for you. And if it's not, that's okay too. You know, this is not everybody is ready to make these modifications in their life mm-hmm. because it's just not the right time. And that's perfectly acceptable and perfectly normal. It is absolutely. You know, one of the, one of the most important things you said out of that is basically, and it was profound for me. It's your life. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, no, no, it's, and it's, you know, it's not to be flippant, but it, it's your life, and, mm-hmm. you know, you are all you have, and um, so that's, that, that, that's keen uh, with me. I want to remind everybody, if you'd like to call in, if you have a question for Stacy, the number is 347-838-9979, press the number 1 on your keypad. I'll see you in the queue, and I'll get you on immediately, or if you want to pose a question in the chat room, that's there for you as well. Please, please do not be shy. Call in if you have a question uh, or a comment. Uh, let's talk about exercising here a little bit, <laughs> Stacey, and, and obtaining an exercise regimen with the busy schedule of a, of a sales professional. You know, oftentimes if you're flying in, you know, you may not have access to just go to, you know, your room and get settled in, that kind of thing. A lot of times, you know, we fly in a different you know, cities, and then the meeting mm-hmm. starts within that hour or so, and, mm-hmm. you know, your flight left at what? 
you had mm-hmm. to be out by six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and then of course, and of course, you know, we talked a bit a little about about the pressure. You know, you can't work out after the meeting because everybody wants to go down and have a cocktail. And you, you you've seen this, and I've been there a thousand yep. times. You know, how, how do you maintain an exercise, you know, regimen with all that going on? I know this, this is kind of a crazy, tricky question, but mm-hmm. you know, is there any remedy to that in your in your eyes? <laughs> it's that, that I feel like. That's all, that's kind of a true question. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, no, really, because when your schedule is that tight, you know, to, to fit in exercise the way I think most people think about exercise, which is like going to the gym or taking an hour-long walk or a jog or something. Right. You're just not going to, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, I mean, this, you're, like you said, you're, you're up early, you're at the airport, you're on the flight, you're at the meeting, you're done, everybody's going out. Um, <laughs> So, so how do you deal? So a couple of things. Again, one, like I said earlier, remember that it's a temporary place where you are. Um, but, you know, for example, instead of getting to the airport and sitting, maybe you just walk around a little bit. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a power walk, but just keep your body moving because you're going to get on the airplane and sit again. So keep your body moving in some way. Plus, I've heard that uh, I heard a, a doctor at Harvard that people who stand and work or for any kind of activity, have five to six percent more brain function than people. So there's wow. added benefit. Yeah, so there's added benefit to being mobile. Um, stretch. So simple, you know, get a lot of physical compression when we sit, and especially on an airplane, because uh, there's not a lot of room to move around. But just mm-hmm. simple shoulder rolls or a neck stretch. So, you know, bringing your say your right ear to your right shoulder. To stretch out you know, some of that soreness and tightness that can come up from from sitting in the cramped position. But also, if you're in a meeting, it's very stressful. The stress is, can be mental and emotional, but it can also be physical. So, you know, just taking a few minutes to kind of stretch out, maybe even lift your arms, just get them up over your head a little, and then bring them back down. It's like simple, silly things. You know, when I say silly, I teach these in my workshop to professionals, and it gets them laughing. Yeah, I, I was, that's also I was, a great way to manage stress. So I was, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna jump in real quickly too because I, I think <laughs> when you were saying that, I could just see myself, and I'm sure others could see themselves in the middle of a meeting. It's pretty intense, and this one person, as myself, is all of a sudden <laughs> lifting their arms and shrugging their shoulders. What the heck is going on with that person? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you, you know, have to warn yeah. everybody what you're doing first before <laughs> you start doing that. But anyway, that's well, my do. silly silliness. I do, and you know, and the thing is, I'll, I'll, you know, I think that there is an opportunity to bring some of that that silliness into work meetings. Mm-hmm. And what I've found is that when I do that in these professional environments, people, and I come from a corporate background, and if someone had told me to go to a stress management program, I would have <laughs> said, "You're ridiculous." Yeah. Going. Right. So, yeah. so I would have rolled my eyes and you yeah. know, you know, thought they were nuts as well. But um, but I have to do this. Knowing that I've been there, and and that I think it's you know it seems very ridiculous, but by the end of it they're laughing, and they they all actually feel better. They're like, oh, I think I just felt something pop in my neck. I've been trying to work out for a long time, and uh, it it actually opens them up a little bit more. They we have a better conversation. They have mm-hmm. a more enjoy, enjoyable time. I think one thing that corporate doesn't do is is allow for breaks during meetings. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think people I think that statistic or the, the fact why it is people have a 20 minute attention span and after 20 minutes they need to do something different mm-hmm. you know whether it's stretch or just have a different conversation or a different activity so I think there is actually a place to bring some of that silliness in to say alright everybody stretch break and get everybody like what are you doing and it, it speaks to that that like shift in your thought process can help yep. with your creativity and productivity as crazy as that sounds, I've actually been in meetings in companies that I've worked for that have had like a facilitator actually do that. And your first yeah. response, and your first response is, "Boy, this is silly." But you know, in the in the midst of it, everybody's having a good time. And guess what? When everybody kind of sits in and settles in, it's kind of yeah. like that that breath of stress is gone, or whatever the meeting was intense right. about is kind of gone, and it's moved on. So you, you're absolutely right. And that takes about how many? That takes about how many seconds or minutes, Stacy? I mean, it's kind of like. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like, like one, one minute. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Lot, a lot. Absolutely. You know, 
And sticking and sticking with the good health, and this is a question that you know I'm sure <laughs> that folks that are listening uh, probably experience, and, and this is something that <clears throat> I know is is probably a, a big problem when you talk about corporate America. But you know there are a lot of companies out there that I think you and I really favor that have jumped on the you know good health train, and they have facilities mm-hmm. that promote good health, mm-hmm. and you know they provide good food, and they may even have a workout area, gym, and, and the kind of thing. But what about for those folks that are listening that work for companies that, you know, while they say they don't, you know, advocate poor health, they're not demonstrating it by providing, you know, resources or opportunities for folks to kind of go out and take a break or maybe have a gym. You know, what do you say to folks out there that are in that are having that experience? You know, you know, what do you do in that case? Do you go to your company and say, hey, look, you guys need to do this, maybe be a leader as far as that's concerned and advocate that? Or, you know, what, what's your thoughts on that? Because I'm sure there's folks out there that are listening to you saying, wow, what, what great instruction, but I just don't have that opportunity with the company I work for. Right. I, I think to your point, yeah, if you, if you think your company has the resources, the, well, financial resources to do it, and even if you, if you don't know, sure, you could take the lead and, and go in. I would present a business case for it. Because mm-hmm. it's definitely, um, you know, I mean, it's definitely can affect the bottom line in terms of um, costs, you know, healthcare costs are rising and um, things like presenteeism. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but that's basically when your employees show up to work, even though they might be sick themselves or they're dealing with family members who are sick. So their thoughts aren't with the work. They're actually oh. thinking about all the other things. I don't um, or, that. Like a, mm-hmm. Yep. So that's kind of a new term. Mm-hmm. But some of the statistics that I've seen is that that can cost companies upwards of $150 million a year in lost productivity. So a lot of these things are they're not tangible. You know, if you say you, you develop a product, you know, and you're not getting the product developed quick enough, you can track that. But how do you track presence? I mean, how do you know that your employee's not really focused because of right. something else that's happening? It's tough to track, and I think there's a lot of legal issues around that as well. Mm-hmm. in terms of pride. But you could certainly ask your company, hey, is this something you consider? Here are some of the benefits that other companies are seeing. Here are some of the costs they're experiencing. Here are some suggestions that I have. You know, I wouldn't go there creating another problem for them. So to speak, <laughs> right, with, right. You know, some, some manageable and reasonable solutions. Uh, and if they're not open to paying for, you know, for those trainers or um, a, a full service solution, then maybe you present, um, you know, the opportunity to have a walking group. You know, is it our artist form a walking group that goes out say, three times a week from noon to one or noon, you know, 12 to 12.30. We get together, we, we go for a walk, we come back, we eat at our desks instead of, you know, eating out or something. Uh, so that, that's, you know, an idea. There's also a lot of companies that might bring in, you know, especially if cost is an issue, outside professionals to teach classes that the employees pay for it. Oh, yeah. Um, pocket. Um, mm-hmm. So that's an option for you as well. And then I think if none of that works out, I think having conversations with people is really important and, and something that is often lacking in the corporate environment, at least you know it was for me. Um, just to say, hey, look, my health is important. I think health is important for, you know, a lot of colleagues that I talk to. You know, if you can get a group together, there's strengths in numbers. Um, but what? For example, what do you think if we all you know, went out once a week and, and did something active um, or after work, you know, to kind of a team building, you could bake it into team building. I, yeah. I've read articles recently where people, managers and employees are going to yoga classes together. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know if I really would want to do that. But, but that, but that, uh, that seemed, that seemed but, to me, that, that would help in camaraderie though. That would be phenomenal absolutely. as far as building camaraderie. Yeah team building, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a win-win for everybody. But I think it probably starts with a conversation, and if the conversation doesn't go well the first time, and you really believe in it, you know, in this, uh, like a health initiative or a wellness initiative, they keep at it, you know, keep researching, talk to other people in the company, see what they think. Again, see if you can, you know, get a group of people behind it to say, yeah, we want this, and this is how it's going to benefit not just us, but the whole company. And so you have to make the business case. I think that's going to be the most important part. And the second part is that, you know, chances are it comes out of HR. I'm guessing it's a larger company that has an HR department. Yeah. Make it as easy as possible for them to implement. <laughs> or take it upon yourself to implement. You, you, you know, the, the whole um, business case 
I think that's so important and critical because, you know, when you're talking to folks that, quite frankly, are, let's you know, just put it out there, the, the C-suite folks um, mm-hmm. who are at the top that are have a major interest, obviously, in the company doing well. You know, in the business okay. case, obviously, and you mentioned this, Stacey, if you have a lot of folks that are sick because they're not keeping, you know, themselves healthy, or if you have a lot of people that, for whatever reason, um, are not being productive because they're tired and stressed, I would think that would have a hit on the bottom line, don't you? <laughs> you know, absolutely. And I and I think companies have seen that. You know, years ago, you know, there's all there's always been there, there was always this thought process that you need to wear a suit to work. Mm. And then somebody thought brilliantly, you know what? People that they're men that walk around with their ties and suits, and then you know the women that have you know you know dresses that are very formal and this formality in the work environment in itself causes stress. Somebody thought of the idea, let's have it business casual. And I think there's a study out there that shows that there's been just a reduction in stress and fatigue and and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. just based on a Mm -hmm. dress code change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's it's crazy and and um, it goes back to also what you said in that, you know, making these necessary changes as a corporation uh, can pay off huge dividends down the line if you have a health, happy, healthy, you know, stress-reduced uh, employee. So I think that's great mm-hmm. instruction on, on your part. You know, when you talk about, um, and you, you talk about, you know, gathering people and gathering friends and, and going out, and I was going to ask you this whole idea of developing workout partners, but you pretty much answered that because I think that's a great idea in building camaraderie and, and, and partnering and that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. if you do, if you do find like-minded people that um, have an interest in that, and you know you work for the same company that uh, that doesn't provide those resources, uh, as you mentioned, you know, is it is it okay to kind of get a consensus group, group and and to uh, kind of communicate this to the corporation? Would you think that's a good idea versus going, you know, mano a mano? And just just trying to think of a strategic way for folks out there to be able to do something like that if their company doesn't provide that type of. Uh, Resource. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think there's definitely strength in numbers. If there's, right. you know, yeah. an opportunity to be healthy together, then you know, no one's standing out, you know, yeah. from the crowd. And then, yeah, you know, I think that, that you can't you can't ignore it so much. Uh, I also do think, because I talk to a lot of people in HR these days in organizations who uh, have started programs or are thinking about starting programs, and I do think that there is a, a turn towards uh, creating a healthier work environment. Now, yeah, yeah. granted, for a lot of companies, it still may be a, a dollar sign, you know, financial right. decision first, but I do think that there is a turn uh, for towards, you know, wellness programming, whatever that might mean for an organization. Um, I would be really surprised if an organization flat out said no, just given the cost associated with not having a healthy workforce. And to be honest, if, if that was the case, um, you know, then I, I don't know what it would be like to work there. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I love, I love, I love, Stacey, how you kept that very professional because I probably would have been a little bit more curt. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you. Uh, I know. I think my audience and myself, of course, know exactly what you mean. I, I yeah. think you. Um, that your decision working with that company for any long term might be might have been made if they're not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not important to them, right? Right. Um, you know. But, but I do see a trend. There is a trend towards creating healthier environments. Yeah, I I, uh, I do too. And um and I, and I know there's probably I would say more people than we think that are out there that face that type of um, experience. <laughs> but um I'm glad that you provided them some good resources and just some good ways to bring that. Because I, I think companies just won't flat out say no. We we uh, we don't think good health is important. We think working our folks to right. quite frankly to death is is more appropriate. And I, I don't think companies would think that. And I and I agree with you. I think companies mm-hmm. would say, well, you know, it's a financial issue for us. Is the reason why we can't have that. But I think right. the the, re- the return on investment in making that financial commitment. Um, you know, as you mentioned, would, would pay off big time. You know, we're heading down to the last few minutes, and you you told me this, and I told you well, that it would go by <laughs> extremely so fast. fast. So before we get into kind of what I call the shameless plug section, so my audience has an opportunity to kind of hear where you what you're doing and, and what resources you have and how you can provide mm-hmm. resources to my audience, I do want to get your ending key takeaways uh, from tonight's discussion. 
Uh, Stacey, so anything that you want to kind of share with my audience uh, when mm -hmm. you were talking about the whole idea of good health and, uh, yeah. and stress? Sure. Um, I mean, I think for folks to take away tonight, this is what I call feel good living. And I call it that because at the end of the day, you know, you want to feel good about the work you did, whether you had challenges or otherwise, and you want to feel good about, you know, yourself, how you, how you took care of yourself and then how you were able to help other people, which is what you're doing as those professional solving problems. Um, so, so key takeaways would be, you know, define good health for you, define what it would look like, what you want to achieve, uh, you know, what your goals might be. So, so be aware of that first. Uh, the second part would be to, you know, at least earlier, you know, remember it's your life. So regain control over that and that decision making and say, yeah, this is what I want for myself. And, you know, and this is what I'm going to do about it. Um, the third thing would be then to go out and do the work, <laughs> you know, kind of figure yeah. out what what is realistic. I mean, that's what's the important thing. I will never tell somebody who doesn't have time to exercise for an hour a day to go exercise an hour a day. But what I will ask you, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what I will ask you is, if you have five minutes, do something that's going to benefit your health in some way. And um, people always ask, like, well, what do you do now? And say, well, nothing. So then five minutes is going to be better than nothing. So start there. And then as you, you know, notice benefits, you'll naturally get more. I mean, that's an organic process. So you have to do the work. Stacey, I think there's some static. Can you, can you? Oh. Okay, now it's gone. Now it's gone. Okay, oh, beautiful. That's okay. Okay. Um, so doing the work in a way that, that fits your schedule and is realistic for your schedule and by choosing activities that you enjoy doing because you'll be more likely to do them. Um, next is, we talked about this now, getting that support network, surrounding yourself with other people who are trying yeah. to achieve the same thing. And then finally, you have to communicate your needs. You know, whether it's to your workplace, that you're looking to you know, bring some programming or to your family, tell them, look, I need 15 minutes to just clear my head. Um, but you have to let people know what they're doing so that they understand and uh, they understand them and then to them as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Now, what are you doing these days and what resources? And if you'd like to leave your contact information, this is the what I call the shameless plug section of the show. So <laughs> I give my guest speakers an opportunity to kind of provide, you know, my audience with resources that they have and kind of sell who they are and what they do. So you're on, Stacey. Okay. Uh, my, my expertise has been in the stress management realm for the last few years. So I have two different avenues I take right now. One is through Healthy Social that you mentioned earlier in the show, which is an online magazine, and although it's um, based on self of Austin, people who contribute and some of the, uh, the parks and resources that I highlight, a lot of the information is universal. For example, I, I mentioned the stretch, stretching and, and things like that earlier. I have videos on the site that have simple stretch breaks, um, simple wellness, all universal. So I welcome people to visit that website at healthyoutshore.com, some of the uh, information and the tips that are available there. Uh, and then the second avenue is uh, my writing and actually communication uh, side of my consulting work, which is really around helping professionals manage stress and present themselves confidently so that they can be successful in their everyday life. And there I offer some plans for hitting organizations that have one-on-one -on -one coaching for professionals who want to work on their presentation skills, um, which really is the stress comes into how you present yourself. And as a sales professional, how you present yourself matters. <laughs> makes mm -hmm. a big difference in, in yep. your clients. So I work with folks in that, um, in that realm as well. And then I teach workshops on those topics, stress management, presentation skills, and speak on those topics as well, conferences, things like that. And that information you can find at stacyshipman.com. And it's S-T-A-C-E-Y, S-H-I-P as in Peter, M-A-N, dot com. Wonderful. Can you, can you do me a favor, Stacey, and can you give your, your uh, I think it's your email address one more time, because when you gave it, you faded out a little bit, just for my honesty. Oh, sure. Um, my personal website is stacey.com, and my email is stacey. S-T-A-C-E-Y at stacyshipman.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stacy. 
it was just phenomenal. I, I tell you what, um, I would be surprised if no one who was listening learned anything because <laughs> I certainly learned a lot, and I think I've got a paper full of notes here that I've taken uh, myself. So I think I got more out of this show probably than anybody listening. So <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the show, and I think this is a very important topic because, you know, as you mentioned, you know, our society and the country uh, has really gone down this unhealthy road. And I think, you know, when you look at our profession as sales professionals, you know, we have so much opportunities to go on that course of eating unhealthy and, and to, uh, you know, get the proper instruction. And as you mentioned, not necessarily, and I don't want to say balance too, you sold me out of that, but to, you know, be in the moment in terms of knowing you know, what's good for your health and, and quite frankly, what's even good for you yourself as a person and as a human being is, is so important. So I want to thank you for sharing that and really, like I said, teaching us all tonight. So thank you so much for being a guest on the Self Professional Network tonight, Stacy. Thanks for having me. I really have, that was great to talk to you. I had fun. Thank you so much. Hey, I want to uh, remind everybody that I will not have an Afterthought show tomorrow night. Uh, but I do want to let everybody know next week's show, and first of all, I should say this, I was remiss. Tonight's show was brought to you by A Square and Beyond Consulting. That's A-H, the number two, and beyond.com. It's delivering beyond our clients' expectations in sales strategies, marketing, and sales training. Give us a call. You can check out our website. That's A-H, the number two, and beyond.com. Always means increasing your competency, means increasing your sales results. Again, I will not have an afterthought show tomorrow night, but I do want to let you know about next week's show, which is July 24th. 7 p.m. We have a big treat for you. We're going to stick in the theme of good health and the sales professional by having someone on who left an extremely lucrative law practice to pursue his dream of becoming a successful athletic shoe entrepreneur salesman. You will not want to miss this show next week, and it's going to be about passion, inspiration, and the desire to stay healthy in a world that, quite frankly, is sometimes unhealthy. So don't miss next week's show. Again, we want to continue our mission to keep to get and keep you healthy as sales professionals. That's next Tuesday, July 24th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as always, I want to remind everybody that after tonight's show, you can go in, if you caught maybe the tail end of this show, you can go in back into this link, into this show, and check the show in its full entirety and the archive functions in Blog Talk Radio. Or if you want to download this show, you certainly can do that in iTunes. So if you're a regular participant or fan of iTunes, you can catch us there. Just type in the search engine on iTunes, the Sales Professional Network, and you can catch all of our shows, including tonight's show in its full entirety, and you can download the show for free. Please tell your friends, coworkers, constituents, everybody who's in the sales business, and you know what, even if you're not in the sales business, that there's a forum just for them. And we meet every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. It's called the Sales Professional Network. As I always, always say, share of mouth and word of mouth, I should say, is the best form of marketing. So thank you so much, everybody, for listening in to tonight's program. And with that, everyone, have a great rest of your evening. Take care, everyone.